Hey everyone, we'll talk about some Brexit news in a moment, but first I guess it's worth mentioning that it's 50 years this weekend since we've walked on the moon. As Michael Collins remained alone flying overhead in his orbiter, he was probably one of the only people in history to be both sad and over the moon at the same time. Unfortunately though, for the likes of you and me, the prospect of commercial spaceflight still seems as far in a distant future as the idea of a supposedly conservative government passing a budget surplus. To this very day, the world still remains divided between countries that have sent a man to the moon and countries that use the metric system. Oh well, talking of space and the stars, the Bear, the Big Dipper and the Plough are also the names of pubs in which you might find Nigel Farage and a number of senior conservatives this weekend, following the week's shenanigans in the House of Commons. For a quick summary, Boris Johnson had previously hinted at proroguing Parliament to force a no-deal Brexit through. That would work by ending the parliamentary session come early September, causing many weeks to be spent waiting for the Queen to officially open the new one, and then preventing any last-minute attempts in October to prevent Britain leaving the EU on the 31st. At this stage, it really wouldn't surprise me if I saw the likes of Kevin Clark filling up the PM's car with diesel if it meant he could delay proceedings for an afternoon while he nipped down the garage to fix it. The Grieve Amendment all passed this week added a legal requirement for the Parliament to sit for five days every two weeks until the end of the year on the alleged basis of discussing the Northern Ireland Assembly and budget. Theresa May, when questioned about it, expressed the sort of emotion you'd see if I was asked what I thought about new socks that somebody had bought. Fans of history will remember, of course, that King Charles I decided to mess around with the opening and closing of Parliament too, and it didn't end up too well for him in the end. The whole thing leaves two possibilities, really. Option number one, Mr Johnson, if he does become PM, continues to have Parliament remain open and fights for a deal in such a confrontational and tiresome manner that the EU eventually tells Britain to make like a tree and leave rather than deal with them. Option number two, convince MPs to back an election and then get a pro-Brexit majority by relying on enough Remain MPs, Labour and Conservative alike, losing their seats to Mr Farage's Brexit party, possibly unchallenged by the Conservatives in many areas. I suspect the first option is the more likely of the two, um, although like a man in an orthopaedic shoe, perhaps I'll stand corrected. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.